from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Sponsored by Intel and AWS. Hey, welcome back to the Cube's live coverage here for reInvent 2020 Amazon Web Services. I'm John Furrier, your host of the Cube. We are the Cube Virtual. Normally we're in person. This year we're remote because of the pandemic. It's a virtual event on both sides. Got a great guest here, Dirk Didascalo, Vice President of IoT at AWS. Um, Dirk, did I get the name right last year? I think I got it right. Didascalo. You still did a good right last year and this year. It's okay. exactly. It's Greek. Great to see you, um, Cube alumni. And last year's talk was phenomenal. Really a precursor to what you you did this year in your keynote leadership session, which you just came off of, um, really kind of extending the conversation around new news and announcements around what's going on in the complex system that is the edge and or IoT, some really awesome announcements. So give us a quick overview of, you know, what was the main theme of the keynote? And then I got some specific questions on the news. Uh, so the main theme was connect today, transform tomorrow. And I think the idea was that um, in order to do complex IoT solutions, um, which, which they are, as you said, complex systems, you need in principle th three different type of elements, software that runs on devices that you connect, then services that you have in the cloud that you manage all of the devices, and then uh, technology like services again in the cloud that you make sense of data um, so that you can do your business logic. And what I was walking the uh, audience through was what is IoT? What are the use cases that we empower today? And then of course I have a bunch of uh, uh, new launches, actually 19, we launched new 19 very significant features at reInvent this, this morning about what else can you do? And uh, some of them hopefully we'll talk about today. Well, we don't have all that time. Go to check out for the folks watching, go to the Amazon reInvent site, log in and watch the replays playing multiple times in different time zones and it's, and it's on demand. The thing that got was impressive to me, I loved your talk and one of the key news was this I, uh, AWS IoT core for low RAWAN, which is fully managed service on AWS, one of the highlights of the, of the presentation. So this is interesting, right? So it's all, this is a whole nother way. It's kind of a disconnected kind of system. Then you got fleet as well, you announced, but so what is low RAWAN? Can you explain yeah. what that is? So LoRaWAN stands for Long Range Wide Area Network, and it's a type of connectivity standard um, which uses very little energy on devices. So think about, you all know about cellular or Wi-Fi, which are connectivity standards. Um, some of them are for high throughput, but if you have low data rates, uh, like for sensors, and you want to have those sensors um, having a lifespan of let's say 10 years for the same battery, then you need very specific standards which don't require a lot of compute and LoRaWAN is one of those standards. And the other thing is it's long range. So that means you can put sensors pretty far away, um, it penetrates also concrete or uh, uh, normally basements, which you can't do differently. So if you think about asset tracking or uh, large scale monitoring of, of sensors, LoRaWAN is the standard to go. It's also a similar technology that powers the sidewalk network for Amazon which is a, a, a public offering that we have as well. And the announcement that we did is that we now have this technology fully integrated with AWS IoT core. So customers who want to spin up those LoRa WAN networks, they don't have to do it themselves. We do it for them. The only thing they need to do is just buy or acquire a specific gateway, which is also pre-certified in our device catalog. And every sensor that is LoRa WAN standard specific can immediately connect securely to the AWS IoT cloud. Okay, so two questions. One is use cases, what is this used for? And you mentioned long range, I'm assuming it's radio frequency. So there's a uh, um, radio and there's a battery power. I mean, how do you drive those long range signals? And and, and, you, and and what are the use cases? I mean, is this for like manufacturing? Is it for like buildings? I mean, what do people use it for? All of them. So I, I give you a great example. We had to compliance mate as one of our launch customers for Laura Van, and what they do is they put sensors in refrigeration units in, in restaurants, and they are typically in really big metal shielded refrigeration units in basements, and if you try to get with cellular or 5G, take your phone down in the basement, there's no reception anymore. But Laura Van, because it's a low frequency, it can actually penetrate uh, concrete quite a bit, and because it sends very low um, data rates, because it only tells you the temperature, instead of uh, streaming video and uses very little battery. So they can put the sensor in all of the refrigeration units and all of the restaurants, and you don't have to touch them for years to come. So that's, for example, one use case. Or you want asset tracking. You put those small little sensors 
I don't know, on containers or on pallets and ship them all over the country. So that, that's parts where you can more, more or less than have these asset tracking. And so like a, is it like a base station? Is there an antenna? Is there a main antenna that goes through walls? It sounds like it's, you what, know, what you penetrate. Do, you buy what is called a LoRaWAN gateway. That is a gateway which has, if you like, is, is a mini base station that you can buy from multiple um, suppliers and partners of ours. Actually, we, we pre-certified 13 of those with 13 different suppliers in our device uh, catalog, and then you buy them and more or less, and then you just connect them directly to uh, the internet because everything else what we'll do, which is called this LoRa network server, which normally is the backend infrastructure, runs them on the AWS cloud, these uh, gateways act as base stations. Think of them, it's like your Wi-Fi router in the home. It's then a LoRa gateway um, device, which then has a longer range than a Wi-Fi would have. And we don't talk about just a few meters here, so it's it's much further. Well, I'd, I'd love to follow up. I don't have a lot of time, but that was a fascinating announcement, really kind of core. Uh, Fleet Hub, another one that got my attention. Um, this is managing IoT, AWS IoT devices from anywhere, from anywhere, from any device. Give us a quick tutorial on Fleet Hub. Well, Fleet Hub, so I, IoT Core already manages a lot of devices. We have, as we said, more than half a billion devices now going or endpoints as we call them through our services every month. And if you have so many devices, then you would like to understand, okay, well, is something going wrong? Is everything fine? And in order to do so, you can't just probe every single device. You typically buy or build an application that the model shows you this fleet management uh, dashboards. And that's exactly what Fleet Hub, fleet hub is. So with very little effort, actually, an IT administrator can now click a button and has these applications that everybody in a company can log in with their standard logins. And then they can see, OK, all the entire fleets, they see is there's something wrong. They can identify issues. And they can also do remediations like, OK, maybe reboot a device or make a firmware update or securely tunnel into a more complicated device for troubleshooting. Awesome. And the other one, by the way, that's awesome. People love those dashboards. Sitewise Edge software. This was interesting. Localizing data for developers to process there, run visualization on a connected or disconnected scenario. This sounds really cool and relevant. What's the point here? Well, Sitewise Edge is for industrial customers. This is a really big deal. So imagine that you would like to optimize your manufacturing line in fact. Um, our, our dedicated industrial service is called Sidewise Edge, came with a gateway component, took all of the data out of the manufacturing plants into the cloud where you could model them and do, do cool stuff with it. Um, the problem is in very many of the scenarios, you don't want to send all of the data to the cloud or you can't send all of the data to the cloud. So customers are saying, okay, can I do all this good stuff that I can do in the cloud locally at the edge, even disconnected? And that's what we now launched. We launched Sidewise Edge. It's the same capabilities that you have in the cloud which now can run on gateways, on outposts, on snow devices, which is um, data ingestion, data modeling, ETL, metrics calculation. And we also have a dashboarding uh, application that we have in the cloud called Sidewise uh, Monitor. And the exact same monitor application can now run locally so that you can log in again, like with Fleet Hub, locally in a URL and you see what's actually happening with your equipment, all that in disconnected stage. Awesome, great job there. Finally, the uh, other one got my attention is James Gosling tweeted about the open source of Greengrass, which was awesome. He obviously, he's a legend in the programming and systems world. Um, now works for AWS. You guys are getting all the great talent. Um, Greengrass 2.0 at the edge. This is a, bit, a new announcement. Take us through that. And obviously the open sourcing with Gosling involved, pretty big deal. Oh yeah, so I, I don't know for everybody, Greengrass, AWS IoT Greengrass, that's our runtime environment, which brings typical IoT core functionality to the cloud, from the cloud to the edge, including Lambda um, and runtimes, including containers, including machine learning inferencing. And over the last two years, James and our team together, we were working actually to revamp this completely. It's a complete rewrite of the entire uh, software that runs on the edge. It's now JVM based, it's now modular. And as you said, we just open sourced it. So um, there was an enormous effort into how can I modularize this? Because there are so many applications and sometimes you have a very powerful machine, you want all the features together, or you have a much cheaper device where you said, hey, you know what? I only want specific applications. And then how do you modularize this? And we also made it deployable at the edge. In the past, you always needed the cloud in order to provision stuff. Now you can actually code and deploy all locally, but doing that at scale. And of course, open sourcing this is a pretty big deal because everybody can now inspect the code and you can extend it to whatever you would like it to have. So what, what is someone going to do with the open source? Give an example of um, some innovation, a bar raising activity app that someone could take with the 
with the green grass open source? What would what would you envision? So what you can do with Greengrass open source in the past, if you wanted to put it, for example, put it on a very specific proprietary system. In the past, we only shipped it as binary code working on Linux, for example. But now I can say, you know what, I have a mix or I have it in Windows or I want to have it in QNX and any type of operating system. And you can now have the code and therefore adopt it yourself. You can also extend it if you like, because all of, the, of course, the, the source code is available. And the and important thing, the modularization is that you can also build your own modules. And it's an Apache license. So follows that. So it's super easy. You can do whatever you like with the code. By the way, open sourcing doesn't change anything in pricing whatsoever. So you get the code, you do what you like with this Apache 2.0. Not to uh, be confounded, we have another open source, which is Free Artos. That's our real-time operating system that's under the MIT license. And there we also have some great news at reInvent. We have now long-term support for Free Artos. I think there's going to be a tsunami of uh, innovation and creative thinking around the edge. Um, real quick, final comment. Edge is a complex system. One of the themes at reInvent this year is, you know, re reimagine, reinvent everything. Um, when you have complexity, taming complexity is the number one challenge that we're hearing from customers, your customers and, and people in the industry saying, we love it, it keeps getting better and better with AWS, but, you know, putting it behind the curtain of SaaS and PaaS and IT, I got to tame the complexity. What do you say to that? Yeah, I mean, it's true, particularly in IoT, it's true because you need to somehow manage complexity from embedded software, hardware, um, fleet management, as we said, uh, uh, cloud uh, capabilities, AI. Uh, it's really, really complex if you try to master this all yourself. So that's why we try to integrate our offerings. I don't know whether you've realized we didn't announce any new services. All of our capabilities are part of what we have and try to combine. So if you like, Sidewise Edge, it's bringing sideways to the edge, but under the hood, it's using green grass in order to make that work. Fleet Hub as well. Um, everything what we've done in Fleet Hub is based on device management. Green grass V2 itself is now under the hood using also device management for the fleet provisioning. So we try now to combine all of the dots, make it easier to access. And then as we said, with these web applications, whether it's sidewise monitor or Fleet Hub, you don't even have to be a developer anymore. You can more or less just directly access a dashboarding app and just see what's happening without that you need to code. Turk, exciting times, congratulations. A lot more to dig into, um, tons of videos on demand on the reInvent site, of course, uh, come to the Cube and we got more coverage on siliconangle.com. Dirk, thanks for your time, congratulations. Can, can I just, one thing which I would like to still announce or people understand, go we ahead. have the EduKit for everybody. If you go to amazon.com and look for AWS IoT EduKit, for $42, you can buy now a tiny little device. It's not about the device, it's about a curriculum which shows you everybody can code. How do I use IoT? How easy it is? And how do I do the voice and ML? So it's an awesome thing for students and everybody else who would like to understand how IoT works. So check it out on amazon.com. Okay, we'll get it out. Educate, check it out, learn. It's easy. Next level programming complexity. Dirk, thanks for coming on. Appreciate oh, it. Thanks so much, John. It was a pleasure. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here. ADOS coverage, reInvent 2020 virtual. We are theCUBE virtual. Thanks for watching.